I want to show you guys one of my favorite rigs to use for big baits and big fish. It is called the Fish Finder Rig. It's a really simple rig and I want you guys to try it out to catch some big fish for yourself. So now the basic premise of this rig is the, the sinker has the ability to slide with what's called the fish finder rig right here. This red thing, it comes in many different varieties. Uh, it, mine just looks like this, but the basic idea is it's able to slide. Now I've attached this to a bead so that it doesn't bang against the knot right here. And I've got it on a, a swivel right here, a snap swivel so that when the bait spins in the current, it won't tangle up my line. Um, and what we're doing is we're putting big chunks of cut bait on here, and uh, I'm able to throw it out really far. Really, I'm able to throw it out really far because I'm using these really long rods. Since we are on lockdown and all the bait stores are closed, I've got crappie from, uh, from earlier this season that I caught that I'm gonna be using this for bait. I'm pretty sure I'll catch something. Even though this is a freshwater fish, the scent is gonna attract something. I don't, I have a feeling we catch some big old catfish here. I like to use this rig to throw like big cut baits like this. Let me show you how I do it. So, I know that fish like to eat the heads, the head half, but they also like to eat the tail half. I'm gonna cut this into half just like this. See that? And then I'll hook it right in the hard spot up here, but making sure that there is hook exposed. Your hook needs to be big enough uh, to actually hook the fish. It can't get buried in the bait. That's the number one problem I see with a lot of anglers trying to use this rig. They don't use a big enough hook, and when the fish pulls it, it doesn't even end up hooking them. They end up losing the fish. Let me show you why I like this rig so much for big fish. First of all, when, I, when this hits the bottom, right, this, this will be floating around like this. When a fish does take this, it has the freedom to take it without feeling any tension of the rod, right? You see how it, it, it's very loose right here? Um, without a sliding, without a sliding mechanism, it will feel the tension of the line and drop the, and drop the bait. This prevents them from feeling the tension. You see how it can take it and really ingest it and swim away without even knowing that there's a hook on it or any, any kind of tension on the line. So a quick trick, the shorter you make this leader line right here, the further you'll be able to cast it. Otherwise, it starts to helicopter. I fished in Cape Hatteras, where there's huge red drum coming off the surf, um, and the, the leader line here is like half the length of it. It's ridiculously short. Uh, I, I've tied mine pretty average, average length here, about 12 inches, maybe 10 to 12 inches. I've got a four ounce sinker on here, and I'm casting it out right between the moving current and the still current. Someone forgot their rod holders today. Stupidly forgot my rod holders. It happens. Now we wait. Oh, I think it's off. Darn! He's on for one second. Well, at least you got your rig back. Something definitely pulled that. Did you see it? Oh, yeah. I should have let it eat a little bit longer. I got a little too excited. I should have let it eat a little longer. <laughs> It all of a sudden. There 
there. Whoa, that's a big catfish. That's a big fat catfish. Perfect hook set, Brendan. Look at that. Pretty big catfish. That's why we use a circle hook so that it doesn't gut hook it. It'll just hook its lip. It's a big old catfish. Now this is a small one for here. I've seen some enormous ones come out of here. This one's a good average size. Probably around seven to 10 pounds here. They're a fun fight and they, they just really, they run with it. So that was such a great example of how this rig works. The fish will pull it, you'll see it. The fish has no idea it's on a line and you have the time to really go and set it. So now I'm gonna give it another cast. Hopefully I catch something a little bigger. Oh yeah. All right, it's on bottom now. If anything pulls, it will know. And the reason I like this reel right here is that I can set my rod down. So I've got a bait runner feature right here where if I switch this on, it'll pull the line out like this. Also not allowing the fish to really feel the tension. It's crucial, it, it's very, very helpful. Then when I set it, this will pop down and it has tension again. This is one of my favorite ways to fish because I get to just kick back, relax, watch for my reels to go off. I love running up to it and hooking and just not knowing what size it'll be. It's just so much fun. Hey guys. What's up? Not a big one, missed a big one. Is there someone doing push-ups right there? Huh? Is that person doing push-ups right there? <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> So it's really starting to get dark now, but I know, I know, as soon as it gets dark, fish like to come out and play. And uh, so far what's been going on is the tide is coming in and slacking. As soon as the tide starts moving back out, which is about an hour after the high tide, the fish are going to be waiting for, for whatever gets swept out by the tide. That's a really good time to be fishing. So I expect I expect to see a little bit more action. So far the action's been slow, but that's because I'm fishing right at the peak of the high tide. Um, usually during that peak of the high tide, it's pretty slow. And usually I find two hours before the high tide is really good fishing, two hours after the high tide is really good fishing. So right now I'm waiting for the, for the lights to go out and for the tide to start going out as well. So I'll see you probably in an hour. One hour later. Let's see what it is. That doesn't, don't, I don't think. Huh? Pulling? Look, what is that? Maybe a big striper, dude. I don't know, actually. What is that? Is that a cat? No, no, it's a strike! <laughs> Who would have thought? That's really fat. It's finally dark, and I think the fish are going to start coming out. But I'm running out of bait, and I'm going to give it a try for about another hour. If nothing, I'm out of here. I hope to get one more big one at least. <laughs> I'm watching you. Come oh, on. Oh, it's something nicer. Oh yeah.
I saw that line moving. Yeah, this is my cut bait. That was a satisfying hook set. I was pulling. Oh yeah. It must have been far out. Here I passed it really far out. Oh, oh. my god. Hello. Holy crap. That's a big catfish. Yeah. Look at the circle hook. Hooking it in the cheek doing his job. Whew. Big catfish. I'd say about eight pounds. What do you think, Pablo? about eight pounds and I know they get way bigger than this it's just a fun fight for me see that the catfish pulled it for so long it had no idea that it was on a hook great 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 comment below do you guys like to cook up your catfish and how do you like to do so I'd like to hear some recipes so this wasn't the best day fishing but I did get to show you guys a perfect example of how to use this rig I think it works wonderfully um, I weeded through all those little fish biting through it and landed the big fish instead of the small ones. And hopefully this will show you guys how to start targeting bigger fish rather than these small little fish that are pecking at your bait. More of a nuisance. Yeah, tonight I got a lot of bites, but I only brought up the bigger fish. Um, because we're targeting the bigger fish. So if you want to catch the smaller fish, put smaller hooks on, do a different rig, do a high-low rig. That's much easier to hit these smaller fish. With this rig, it's pretty much primarily for these bigger, big, these bigger fish. Whether it be big catfish, big stripers, um, or any any fish that's in your beach area. I only caught a couple cats today, but I caught one nice big one. But that's fishing. Sometimes the fish just aren't cooperating. You have to have a lot of things come together for it to be a good fishing day. The tides need to line up with the water temperature, with the air pressure, with your line, your reel, your rod, your bait. Everything needs to be lined up correctly and then you'll get some fish. Or you could just be a complete noob and you have beginner's luck and you land all the fish without doing anything. That's how it works. It's so infuriating, but that's just how it works. So that's our episode. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you'll try this rig out for yourself. Um, if you don't want to catch catfish, this works for all sorts of fish. Red drum, black drum, striped bass, you name it. Give it a try and let us know how you like it. Here at Hay Skipper, we want to get people to go out and go fishing. We want to make learning how to fish easy for you guys. We do this by teaching you with our tutorials online on, on YouTube and on our website, hayskipperfishing.com. I've written a lot of different eBooks based on surf fishing, jetty fishing, pier fishing, knot tying, Lots of different stuff. If you guys want to learn, I suggest you check out our ebooks that we write. And uh, I designed these, they're so nice. I put them up on our website, hayskipperfishing.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope it helps you. See you next Thursday.